Now this is not completely proof, full, full proof, excuse me, okay, but it works most of the time, okay. You're going to pick a number for x. Five is usually a good number. Anytime you're picking a number for x just out of the blue, you want to avoid one and negative one because those can have some exceptions. You want to avoid two and negative two for the same reasons. Um, usually five is usually a pretty good number if you're having to plug it in to compare answer choices, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to plug that number into the original function. So for this problem, we're going to plug five into this original function right here. I'm going to do it in a second. I'm going to summarize and make you do it. I'm going to get that answer. When I have that answer, I'm going to plug that answer into the inverse choices and see which one gives me an answer of five. Now the reason this works, remember yesterday when I was explaining inverses, x and y's switch. So if I've got five in some answer for the original, then in the inverse, those are going to switch. The, I'm going to have some answer is equal to five in the inverses. But you have to check all your choices because sometimes one of them, more than one, may work out. And if that happens, you got to pick another number to test uh, to narrow it down from there. Okay? So let me show you what I was talking about. Well, it's pick five. Okay, so, um, and it's not always going to come out evenly. I'm going to plug five into this equation right here. Now, I have to rely on my calculator. Okay, I don't know what the fifth root of four is. So I'm going to have to use my calculator. Now, uh, let me show you how to do a fifth root. It's kind of weird, because if you go to the math menu, um, I see a cube root for number four. Number five has a little x right there. Okay, so what we need to do, everybody take your calculator right now. I need you to know where this is. Press a five. Okay, for the fifth root. Then you go to math and select number five, okay, so what that's telling your calculator is that x is five. We're taking the fifth root, you got to put this in parentheses, five minus one, close your parentheses, because that's all that's under the root, and then the minus two comes after. Okay, so we get this negative decimal answer. We want to store that as x, okay, because we're going to plug it into the other answer choices. So let me write down what I did. I plugged in 5 and I got this answer. So that's for the original. So for the inverse, when I plug in negative 0.68, I should get 5 as the answer. Inverses switch x and y. So I'm just going to go through all my answer choices here, and I'm going to do x plus 2 raised to the fifth power plus 1. I get 5, okay? So that's good, but don't automatically say that a is the answer because one of the other answer choices might work out too. Um, I'm going to try b. b doesn't really make much sense. A cube root, how is a cube root related to a fifth root? That doesn't really make sense, but you never know. Uh, cube root, negative cube root of x, close your parentheses because x is the only thing under that root. Minus 3, that did not give me 5. So I can say b is not the answer. Okay, c. I've got another fifth root. Uh, 5 math, number 5. All of this stuff is under the square root. And I have more than one thing in the numerator. So I gotta do parentheses for everything that's under the uh, fifth root. I gotta do parentheses for everything that's in the numerator. Uh, did not get five. Okay, and then I wanna check D. Two X to the fifth minus one. 
did not get five. So A was the only one that I got five back out for. Uh, now, hopefully you know enough about inverses to look at these answer choices and say, okay, if my original was a fifth root, it makes sense that my inverse is going to include a fifth power. So hopefully you, you could at least narrow it down to A and D before you even try this method that I was showing you, but I just wanted to point out a few things as far as typing things into the calculator. That's why I did uh, all the answer choices, even though really A and D are the only ones that really make any sense whatsoever. So you could just check those. Um, <coughs> okay. So inverses think opposites. Okay, inverses think opposites. So if you start with a fifth root, the opposite of that would be a fifth power. If you started with x cubed, then the opposite of that would be a cubed root. Start with x squared, square root, vice versa. Okay? Uh, but then worst case scenario, plug 5 into your original, plug that answer into your answer choices, and see which one gives you 5 back out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got some 